probably all kinds of controversial things went through your minds as I'm going through this. You know, this, is, this is a thing that Christians love to debate, right? This is, a, this is one of the big debates. Okay, Shum Shulam, Samson. Um, I've heard it said before that about uh, the accounts in Genesis 1 that the point of them was not necessarily um, like chronologically putting in the age, really the whole understanding of you know whether it's 24 hours a day or anything like that is secondary to the fact that the point of it is to say that Yahweh did this and not other gods. Like with each day, one of the pagan gods was being destroyed in a way. Do you know anything about that? Um, I'm not sure that I want to make it quite as definite as that, that each day is an attack upon a pagan deity. But in general, the text is anti-pagan. Um, I mean, the pagan world was all filled with, with, with mythology. Myth is the idea of a story that connects this world with the world of the gods. Myth doesn't mean a false story, it means a connecting story between heaven and earth. And the text is anti-mythological because it doesn't name sun and moon. It doesn't name stars. Uh, and the, um, the deep, uh, the, the tehom that, that the spirit is hovering over, that's not Tiamat. The Babylonian goddess of uh, that, that Marduk slays, that's simply the water. It's, it's demythologized. So, so the paganism is being attacked, and the world is treated not as, as uh, replete with spirits, uh, Babylonian style, myth style, but rather as the artifact of God's handiwork. So the text is thoroughly anti-pagan, but I'm not sure I want to say that day one was against this god and day two against uh, that god. Another question? Brian. Uh, Byron, I, I really was struck by how you said that Genesis 2 uh, gives us an indication of how to read and interpret Genesis 1 in, in that there were clearly some natural processes involved. That's, that's very important, I believe. That, the, the term natural processes, um, continues to come up in a lot of reading that I've been currently doing mostly theistic evolutionary type authors. Um, you sort of dismiss theistic evolution as something that is, is generally not um, part of, of normal evangelical Christian thought. Would you mind saying a, a few words about why you would sort of dismiss that or what some of the major theological, maybe there's not enough time for that, but uh, well, I, I debated with myself as to whether to include a couple of slides on theistic evolution. I almost did. I almost did. Because I mean, there are godly people who hold that view. Uh, I'm not going to say that this view excludes you from the kingdom of God. That would be, I think, a great act of presumption on my part to say such a thing. Uh, I know of good Christians who hold that view. Um, I have respect for such persons. Um, in my understanding of, um, of the text, the text repeatedly says that, you know, let the earth bring forth creatures according to their kinds. That seed-bearing plants according to their kinds. Creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And, uh, when we attempt to say breeding of various animals, you know, um, well, let's see, wolves and dogs and coyotes can all interbreed, and, and their offspring are fertile. So Canis familiaris, Canis lupus, Canis latrin, is okay. They're, they're classified as species, three different species, but they're interfertile. The, the offspring are, are fertile. Um, you know, really, we've got one, one kind of critter there and three varieties of, of dog. Um, in my understanding, the boundary of a true species has never been broken. Um, now, you're, the, you're the, the natural scientist, um, and I'm the theologian. Uh, maybe you know of cases where, that, that, where this has actually been done, but I, I'm not aware of any case where the offspring of uh, a particular non-interferal group, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't say this right, but uh, where the offspring were not interferal with the parent type, unless it's hybrids that are sterile by, by definition. You know, mules are sterile. Hybrid corn is sterile. Um, the, the notion of a hybrid seems to mean that when, when you try to cross, you get a dead end. So, um, 
speaking as a theologian with, with uh, what knowledge I do have here, it seems to me that the kind, according to their kinds, that that imposes a biological limit beyond which mutation cannot push. So I accept the notion of microevolution, that is variation within a kind or maybe within a species, uh, but I've been reluctant to accept macroevolution. Um, Similar things have been done, say, with uh, African violets. About 20 varieties have been found in nature. About 3,000 varieties have been cultivated by uh, amateurs and, and by botanists. But they're all infertile with each other. The seeds are fertile. Um, so that's not true speciation. I don't think I've seen a an occasion of true speciation. Now, maybe you want to take me aside after this and tell me something. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I mean, I it seems as though, depending on who you talk to, everybody has a different definition of what a species yeah. really is. Yeah, that's probably. So would it be, maybe I'm taking you too far, but would it be fair to say that your objections or hesitancies are more uh, from the biological end than from the theological end? Like, I, I guess, maybe in simplest terms, my question was, do you have big theological issues with theistic evolution? Well, I'll say, or are there I, I have texts that, that you would say, wow, this is just right in the face of theistic evolution. I have more theological concerns about the doctrine of apparent age put out by younger creationists. I think that is actually a dangerous doctrine. I have some concerns about theistic evolution. Um, so I'm happy to call myself a creationist, an older creationist. In a certain way, I feel almost more kinship with the theistic evolutionists than I do to the younger creationists when they press the doctrine of apparent age. I think that if that doctrine were true, science would become impossible. Because the world would not be a reliable artifact. I agree. The geology would become impossible. Astrophysics would become impossible. Um, that, that impinges upon the reliability of God. So, so I, I'm deeply concerned about that particular angle. Um, I suppose I have somewhat less concern about theistic evolution, but only somewhat. <laughs> only somewhat. Okay. There's, there's an attempt at honest answers there. Another question over here.